T-Express at Everland is the newest of the four Intamin prefabricated wooden roller coasters. It opened in 2008 at Everland in South Korea following the unveil of El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure in 2006. Similar to the older Intamin prefab woodies such as 2001's Colossus at Hyda Park, the original Intamin prefab, and 2003's Balder at Lisiburg, T-Express recently closed at the end of 2023 for some sort of retracking. Colossus was fully retracked with OEM or original equipment manufacturer prefab wooden track rails from Intamin in 2019. In 2022, Balder received a substantial amount of new OEM prefab wooden track rails as part of a $3.2 million refurbishment, and Six Flags Great Adventure regularly manufactures their own prefab wooden track rails in a similar fashion that the OEM rails are made for El Toro. So when news released that T-Express would be closing for retracking of its El Toro section, many assumed or hoped that Everland would choose to retract T-Express with OEM prefab wooden track rails from Intamin. But thanks to an anonymous viewer of the channel, we can now confirm that T-Express is not being retracked with Intamin's prefab wooden track system, and is instead receiving RMC's Steel 208 retrack rails. RMC's 208 retrack is based off their successful Steel iBox track, and is meant to be compatible with the ride's existing trains, mechanical systems, and controls. The Steel track has already been installed on the first Camelback, and will make its way onto the ride's first drop, high-speed S-bend, and climb into the mid-course brake run shortly. At first, I was highly disappointed over this, as while RMC's track rails yield one of the smoothest experiences in the amusement industry, I really wanted T-Express to remain a true wooden roller coaster. Now, I don't blame Everland for this decision, as the steel rails will last much longer and be far more maintenance-free, as it won't be necessary to perform the daily in-depth track inspections and upkeep of the new steel rails, like what was necessary with the wooden prefab rails. The other benefit with RMC's 208 retrack is that parks can keep the profiling of their coasters the same, so I would expect T-Express to exhibit the same experience it always has, even with steel rails. I'd also expect T-Express to continue operating with its original fleet of Intamin prefab woody trains, and for the Intamin fart to still be present unless the upstop wheels of the trains are altered, as the small steel upstop wheels are what produce the classic fart noise. I do wonder how loud the new track rails will be since they're hollow. Perhaps the rails have been filled with sand to keep noise levels similar to what they were before. The only things I worry about are where the transition from wooden track to RMC steel track will occur, as RMC didn't exactly deliver the best design transitions when they retracked Mindblower at Fun Spot Kissimmee with their 208 retrack, and also if other parks who are struggling with their intimate prefab woodies, like Six Flags Great Adventure, will take inspiration and follow a similar path. Great Adventure has struggled with El Toro for years, the ride has suffered a number of incidents, the daily inspections and upkeep of the ride are costly, and so is the effort the park takes to produce their own new track rails each year. I fear that Six Flags executives will be watching how T-Express performs with its new 208 retrack rails, and will even visit Everland to experience the updated coaster themselves. They'll see how smooth that portion of the ride is and consult with Everland over their decision to go with steel rails rather than Intamin's OEM wooden track. I've heard rumors that Six Flags Great Adventure is interested in giving El Toro a complete refurbishment similar to what Colossus at Hyda Park received, and we would see the ride entirely retracked with Intamin's OEM track rails and receive a brand new fleet of trains. However, this is certainly an expensive option. Unless, of course, Great Adventure were purchasing an Intamin roller coaster for 2025, and if Intamin were to subsequently discount the cost of an El Toro refurbishment. But for one, Intamin does not produce the wooden track rails themselves, and that is subcontracted to the German company, Zublin Timber. This adds cost as not only does Intamin need to make a profit as part of the transaction, but so does Zublin, which certainly makes the cost to purchase OEM rails much higher. On the contrary, RMC manufactures their own track which lowers costs immensely. They also manufacture their rides right in the United States which would make shipping the rails to New Jersey far cheaper than the international shipping of OEM rails from Germany to the United States. So if T-Express's steel retracking is a success, I would not be surprised if Six Flags began highly considering doing the same for El Toro. As for the two prefab woodies in Europe, they've luckily been recently retracked, meaning they should be okay as wooden coasters for years. But when their rails eventually wear out and need replacement, I wonder what the parks will choose to do at that point. Whether they'll even keep the coasters and replace them with something newer, continue to retract them with OEM rails, or go with a steel retract option. The one benefit the European parks have is that the OEM rails are produced on the same continent and do not require any expensive shipping overseas. So what do you think will happen? Will RMC, the company who constructed El Toro, be the ones to turn it into a hybrid coaster? And will T-Express receive even more steel track as the years continue? At least for now, the Balder section 
will remain entirely wood. Please comment below your thoughts on the situation and I'd love to get a discussion going. Personally, I want El Toro to remain a prefabricated wooden roller coaster, but if doing so is too much of a challenge or if the cost to refurbish El Toro with OEM prefab wood track rails is too much, then I think it makes sense to call up RMC and invest in Steel 208 retrack for El Toro. Especially since with Steel track, the ride would run as smooth as it did in 2006. Now I'm only okay with this hypothetical Steel track if El Toro continues to use Intamin's trains and the track profiling is kept the same, although I wouldn't mind if the ride's floater airtime hills were modified to feature stronger airtime. So that will do it for this video and let's keep an eye out for when T-Express begins operating with its new Steel track. Thanks for watching everyone and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I have an upcoming problematic roller coasters video on Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket at Universal and you're certainly not going to want to miss it. Alright, peace.